Hey guys, so <clears throat> here's your guys' homework on graphing rational functions, okay? Numbers 5 through 7 and 11 through 14. So given the characteristics, you guys, which you guys will have to do eventually, like solve for that yourself, <clears throat> you're going to graph the rational function and use test points if necessary. So based on this information, we are going to graph this. So we have a horizontal asymptote. So let's go to y equals zero. And because, so y, y axis equals zero. And then we have a horizontal asymptote on the x axis, because that's where y is equals to zero. So there's that piece of information. And the next piece of information we're giving you guys that the vertical asymptote is zero at x equals 0 and x equals 3. So locate where x is equal to 0 on the x-axis and we have a vertical dotted line there. And we have one at x equals 3. So go to 3, x equals 3, and draw a vertical dotted line there. <clears throat> so there is our graph, and we have to find a test point for this region, for this region, and this region, right? So this is where we got to use some test points. So I'm going to use a test point at x equals negative 3. I'm going to use a test point at x equals negative 3 first. So if I plug in negative 3 into this equation, you guys, right, we're going to get negative 4. I'll write y equals negative 4 over now negative 3 times negative 3 minus 3. So I get negative 4, you guys, negative 3 times negative 6, which is negative 4 all over positive 18 which simplifies to negative 2 ninths. So negative 2 ninths, you guys, right? That's pretty significantly small. And is it, well, let's draw the point, actually. So there's our test point. Now, <clears throat> here's negative 3. Is this negative 2 ninths above the line or below? But definitely below. And negative 2 2 ninths is really small, definitely in between 0 and negative 1, so probably be something like right there. Okay, and there's that. <clears throat> now let's find a test point in here, right? In between 0 and 3. So I'm going to do a test point of x equals 1. So that means I'm going to plug in 1 into, again, the original equation, or you guys can plug it into there. Do you have to choose x equals 1? No, but any any x value in between that region. So we got, what's the equation? Oh, it's 1 times 1 minus 3, which is negative 4 over negative 2, which is 2. So we got a test point at 1 comma 2. So 1 comma 2, you guys, plot that point, which is right there. So that means there's that. And we also need a test point over here, right? So let's do a test point at x equals 4, right? Why not? So plug in 4 into there. Or you guys can also do the original equation. Doesn't matter. 4 times 4 minus 3, which is negative 4 times 4 times 1 which is negative 4 times 4, which is negative 1. So test point is 4 comma negative 1. Plot that. 4 comma negative 1 is right there. So now we have our test points. So now we can graph, right? Remember, with rational functions, it will go along with the curves. So it will hug along the asymptotes, right? So this would be our answer for the graph of that <coughs> equation. And if we take a look at number five answer, 
And there we go. That's what's going to look like. Okay. Number six. Okay, 0, 1 fourth. Plot that. So 1 fourth, you guys, 0.25. It's in between 0, 1, closer to 0 than 1, right? So 0, 1 fourth is somewhere right there. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative one fourth. So y equals negative one fourth, you guys, is somewhere like right there. And we're going to plot that. So again, that's horiz so that is horizontal asymptote at y equals negative one fourth x equals negative 4 for vertical asymptote, so go to negative 4, you guys, right, on the x-axis, and it's a vertical line there. And we have an x-intercept at 4, 0. 4, 0. Okay, so how does this look? Well, we need do we need a test point here no because look you guys we already have points on that side of this of that side of the vertical asymptote so definitely this graph is going to look like that right but we do need a test point over here right on the left hand side so i'm going to choose x equals negative five and we're going to plug that in into this equation right there so y equals negative 5 minus 4 all over negative 4 times negative 5 plus 4. So we're going to get negative 9 up top, negative 4, negative 5 times 4, you got negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So negative 9 over negative 4 times negative 1, you guys, is positive 4. Oh, so it's just negative 9 fourths. So negative 5 comma negative 9 fourths you guys that is definitely below the line and then 4 goes into 9 you guys like twice right with a little bit of change so negative 5 comma negative 2 point something so right around there right and again ask yourself how many times does 4 go into 9 two times at least, right? So it's going to be negative two point something, and then your guys' graph is going to look like that, right? Just like that. And let's verify number six, and there you guys go, right? All right, <clears throat> here's number seven. Okay, negative two thirds. So zero comma negative two thirds, you guys. So it's in between zero and negative one, but closer to negative one, so probably right around there, right? There's your y-intercept. Horizontal asymptote, it's negative one-half. So negative one-half, you guys, on the y-intercept is right around there. It's right around there. And then no slant, no hole. Vertical asymptote, go to x equals negative three. So on the x-axis, negative three. Vertical asymptote there. And then x-intercept, negative 4, comma 0, which is right there. So do we need a test point on this left-hand side of the vertical asymptote? No, because we already have a point there, right? Do we need a test point on the right-hand side of the vertical asymptote? No, because we already have a point there. So this, you guys, is going to be like that, and this graph, you guys, is going to be like that. And if we check, number seven, and there we go. <coughs> Just like so, okay? Okay, 11. All right, y-intercept, zero, zero. So there's zero, comma, zero. No horizontal. We do have a slant, though. So... If you guys forgot about this, the slope is negative 1 over 4, so it's going to go down 1 and to the right 4, right? And we have a y-intercept at that starts at negative 1, right? So go to negative 1, you guys, right? 
And then if we start here, it's down one, right four, right? Down one, right four. Which is also up one, left four. So this is going to be... <coughs> your guys' slant asymptote <coughs> right there. <clears throat> okay. No hole. Vertical asymptotes x equals 2. So go to the x-axis and it's going to be a dotted vertical line at x is equals to 2. And we have an x-intercept at 0 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0 which is right <coughs> there. So let me just make sure this is looking spiffy and yes it is. All right, so now do we have test points on the left-hand side of the vertical asymptote? Yes, we do. We know it's in this region, right? But do we have a test point on the right-hand side? No, we don't. So we need to find one, right? So I'm going to use x is equals to 3, right? Why not? So plug in this, you guys, into here to find our y value. So 3, everywhere you see an x, it is a 3. Negative 4 times 3 minus 2. 3 times 5, you guys, and then negative 4 times 1. 3 times 5, you guys, is 15, and negative 4 times 1, you guys, is negative 4. So negative 15 over 4. 3 comma, negative 15 over <clears throat> 4. So how many times does 4 go into 15? 3 times, right? But then there's 3 remainders, so... It's like negative 3.75. So 3 comma negative 3.75, which is right around <clears throat> there. So it's a little it's a little lower than negative 3, you guys, right? And it's closer to negative 4. So we have our <coughs> test points, and now let's graph this. So this graph, you guys, right here, probably going to look something like this, right? Oh, my gosh. Probably something like that. And then this graph, you guys, probably something like that. And again, if we look at our answer, you guys, <coughs> pretty similar, right? <clears throat> pretty similar. <coughs> okay, uh, number 12. Okay, 0, 1 third. So 1 third, you guys, is in between 0 and 1, closer to 0, right? So. There's your y-intercept. Horizontal asymptote is at y equals 1 half. So 1 half, you guys, is in between 0 and 1. And then it's a dotted horizontal line there, right? Dotted horizontal line there. Vertical asymptote, x equals negative 3. So go to the x-axis at negative 3, and that's where you guys are going to have a vertical asymptote. And then x-intercept, you guys, negative 2 comma 0, which is right there. So do we need a test point on this side? No, because we already have a point there, right? We actually have two points there. But do we need a test point over here? Yes. So I'm going to use test point of negative 4. And again, plug it into here so that we can find our y value, right? Negative 4 plus 2. Everywhere we see an x, it becomes a 4, right? 2 times negative 4 plus 3. Negative 4 plus 2, you guys, is negative 2. 2 times negative 4 plus 3, you guys, negative 1. So negative 2 all over negative 2, you guys, which is positive 1. So negative 4 comma 1 is your guys' test point, which we're going to plot right there. So we have a graph that will be here. And we all have a graph that is right here. And that should be your guys' graph for number 12, which it is. Okay, last two. <coughs> okay, so here we have a y-intercept at 0, 0,6, so on the y-axis at 6. 
we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. So go to the y value of 2, you guys, right? And it's a horizontal line there. We don't have a slant. We have a hole at negative 2, comma, negative 1. So negative 2, comma, negative 1, you guys, is right here. So there's a hole there. Vertical asymptote, x equals negative 1. So here is the x-axis at negative 1. And it's a vertical line, dotted line there. And we have an x-intercept at negative 3, comma, 0, which is right there. So do we need a test point on this side? No, we have two test points. Do we need a test point on the right-hand side? No, we already have one right there. So this graph, you guys, is going to look like that for number 13. And up here, it's going to look like that. So that is the graph you guys should have gotten for number 13. Which looks to be pretty good. I do not know why this is a closed circle because that should be an open circle right there. It should be open. And last one, you guys, which is 14. So we got a y intercept at 0, comma, negative 3 halves. So 2 goes into 3 once, right? At least. And then it's halfway. So negative 1.5, so 0, comma, in between negative 1 and 2, right? Y-intercepts at y equals 0, or horizontal asymptote, so here is where y equals 0, and it's a horizontal line there. <clears throat> Slants none, holes none, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, so go to the x-axis of 2, and we have a vertical line at x equals 2. And then x intercepts none. So <coughs> do we need a test point on this side? No, because we already have a point on that side. We do need one over <coughs> there. We do need one on this side. So I'm going to use test point here at x equals 3. So we're going to plug it into here so that we can find our y value, right? 3 minus 2. 3 over 1, which is 3. So 3 comma 3 is our test point, which is plotted 3 comma 3, which is plotted right there. So this graph, you guys, is going to look like this for this part and like this for that part. And that is how you guys <coughs> do your guys' graphs, okay? So again, take some time, but you guys make sure you guys practice and see how you guys do, okay? All right, good luck everyone, peace.